What's up guys, it's Sam and Colby. Today we are going to be reacting to the creepiest unsolved murders of all time. The Zodiac Killer is number one. The Zodiac Killer was a serial killer who terrorized Northern California in the late 1960s. During his spree, the killer sent a series of so taunting creepy. letters to regional newspapers. I'm curious what the word Zodiac actually means because I've only known Zodiac signs. Those are confusing to me anyways. If you're an Aries or a Sagittarius, I don't understand that. You don't understand Sagittarius? Maybe his logic was just confusing people like Zodiac signs. Do you think he only killed like Capricorns? I hope not. Let's find out. Show us what's going on in, in, inside you right now, Sam. Is this new Sam? I have headache. If, if it all boils down to the headaches. question of you're giving yourself up if you could be assured that you wouldn't get capital punishment. Wait, they were interviewing anonymously? He just called in. I want to kill those kids. Oh my god! That took a very dark turn. Those are bad things. I've never had a headache that makes me want to I yeah. only want to kill the people that don't subscribe. I'm just kidding guys, for legal purposes, that is a joke. Just subscribe! Oh. Oh. Go Lizzie, go Lizzie. In 1892, the quiet town of Fall River, Massachusetts, was rocked We've by the there. brutal murders of Andrew and Abby Borden in their oh, we know. The primary suspect oh, we know. was Andrew's daughter, Lizzie Borden, mm -hmm. who was present in the house at the time of the murders. Who was the only one home. Saw her. Lizzie was acquitted due to a lack of direct evidence. Pop quiz. Pop quiz, asshole. I actually don't know if I know the answer to this. I have to like really think. Do you remember the name of the person that we concluded it was in our video? Jeez. I would think probably did it. You gotta go to the Lizzie Borden house yourself to figure out this murder. Let us know what you think. Comment down below. But let's go! On June 9, 1912, in the town of Villisca in southwestern Iowa, Josiah and Sarah Moore took their four children to the Children's Day service at the Presbyterian Church. Accompanying them were Lena and Ina Stillinger. The next morning, six more family members and the Stillinger sisters were discovered in the beds with their heads covered with bedclothes and their skulls bludgeoned 20 to 30 times with the blood in their necks. A lengthy investigation yielded oh several God. suspects, one of whom was tried twice and acquitted, but the crime remains an unsolved mystery. So sad. What just absolutely baffles me, the murderer came in with an axe that wasn't his and killed eight people, so it's a pretty violent murder and none None of them had gotten out of bed. And it's this rickety old building. So like, how? And no one knows. We actually interviewed a woman who wrote a book called A Man From The Train. That's the person that she thinks killed these guys. He was a traveling serial killer. And I think his name was Paul Mueller. Oh, you're right. Good memory. Thank you. The Alcatraz prison break. 60 years ago this month, three inmates pulled off the impossible. They broke out of the escape-proof Alcatraz federal prison. What's crazy is they literally made this specifically so that no one would ever escape. And then it became the most famous story ever that people escaped. Yeah, no, I love it. It's believed they slipped away on a raft made of raincoats. The FBI declared the men most oh. likely drowned in the frigid waters of the San Francisco Bay. But the case was reopened in 2013 after this letter was received. My name is John Angland. I escaped from Alcatraz in June 1962 with my brother Clarence and Frank Morris. I always, always, always heard that they probably didn't make it. Strike me down if this is bad, but like, it's kind of sick if they made it. What if we go to Alcatraz this year? Should we go guys? Room 1046. This is Roland T. Owen who will check into the Hotel President in Kansas City, Missouri on January 2nd, 1935. <gasps> That's my birthday! In Kansas City! Kansas City, Missouri oh. on my birthday! So you are a serial killer Got in it. a past life. Dude, this could Allegedly. literally be you. Allegedly. One of the hotel operators would find out that room 1046's phone had been disconnected. The same bellboy who checked Roland into the hotel was sent up to his room. There's a do not disturb sign hanging on the door, but when the bellboy knocked, Roland told them to come in. Okay. He fixed the phone and left the room. Only four hours later, the phone would be disconnected Ooh. again and another bellboy oh. would be sent up to fix it. And the bellboy would find Roland lying down naked in a pool of his own blood. Oh. Police arrived and they discovered that Roland was tied up and tortured for several hours. What? He had been stabbed multiple times and was hit so hard in the head that his skull was fractured. Oh. Somehow Whoa. Roland survived the assault, Wait, but when questioned what? by police, all he would say was that he had fallen against the bathtub. Wait, Later what? Later that night, Roland would slip into a coma and pass away. What? In between the four hours that a bellboy went in and out of this room, he got tortured? Like, how did he not see another person in that other room? The first bellboy might have walked in on something about to happen, and the killer was, like, hiding underneath the bed. Isn't that creepy? You know, obviously he had a bunch of head trauma, but it's crazy that he didn't even say who it was. If I was like on my last breath, it's like, I got nothing to lose. Like might as well just rat this guy out. Oh, I would rat him out for sure. Snitches get stitches. The ice box murder. 
years. Police found the bodies of Fred and Edwina Rogers chopped up in their ice box. Huh? Their prime oh! suspect was Charles Rogers, the couple's son. There's been a lot of theories surrounding Charles, oh, Charles. from links to the CIA and the JFK assassination. What do you think happened to Charles? Charles died. Charles the guarded died. Years traced him to Honduras, where he met a gruesome death too. Pickaxe to death when a business venture went south. He got Minecrafted to death? That's a crazy way to go. Because you probably wouldn't die on impact. It'd be like stab, 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 and you'd be like, dang. Would you rather get pickaxed or back of an axe like Lizzie Borden. Probably just one back of the axe to the head. That'd probably be a cleaner way to go out. Texarkana Phantom. The Texarkana Fountain. <laughs> The Texarkana Phantom. You've heard this one, serial killer stalking young couples on Lover's Lane. But it isn't fiction, it's the real deal. Oh. A legendary predator that people in Texarkana have always known as the Phantom Killer. Two young lovers parked along Richmond Lane. Suddenly a man in a white hood approaches with a pistol and a flashlight in his hands. The young man is dragged from the car and beaten unconscious, but at least in the first case, the Phantom's victims survive. Three Ooh. weeks later to the day, another Lover's Lane attack outside Texarkana. Oh. This time, the couple was murdered. This serial killer just goes up to Lover's Lane, so it's like one of those roads that people just park their car and He's probably just like a sad single dude that's like, fuck love. Or maybe he just knows they'll be distracted. They were like a little bit of like, like what? The Axeman of New Orleans. From 1918 to 1919, New Orleans was paralyzed in fear of the Axeman. <sighs> How do they decide that one guy gets this cool name called the Zodiac Killer? And this guy's just the Axeman. The Axeman. Like, come on. Sorry, Axeman. Victims were Ooh. savagely hacked with an object taken from their own Property. On March 13th, 1919, local newspapers received a haunting letter. <sighs> this person wrote, They have never caught me and they never will. I am what Whoa. you, New Orleans, and your foolish police call the Axeman. The letter went on to say that the Axeman would strike again at 12.15 at night on March 19th. But any household playing jazz would be spared of any harm. On March 19th, 1919, the city was alive with jazz music as That's everyone who was awesome. able to would play it on their records just to be safe. And it seemingly worked because no one died that night. Oh my Dude, god. Dude, that guy's playing with fire. Not only is he a serial killer, which again, we're not condoning people murdering or escaping prison or whatever. That's not cool. But like, to get away with something of that magnitude and then like send a letter to the police, like, you guys can't find me. That's kind of badass. He literally made the entire city of New New Orleans play jazz music just to say like, oh, please don't kill me. And he's probably walking the streets like, this is so funny. Oh. Bad, bad guy. It sounds very similar to the Velisca Axe murders where he would use an ax from their property and then leave. Interesting. Oh, the missing head. Did you know that the head of Mexican revolutionary icon Pancho Villa has been missing for over a hundred years? Pancho Villa was assassinated in 1923. Assassination? I've never seen that before and thought ass ass. I think it's misspelled. Assassinate. Wait! Wow. Ass ass? Double ass in. What's in the double ass? Nation. <laughs> the nation's in that double ass. On February 1926, Pancho Villa's grave was disturbed and That's that his horrible. body inside had been decapitated. And the primary suspect was American soldier Emil Holmdahl. Emil fought alongside Pancho Villa in the Mexican oh, Revolutionary what? War, but ultimately turned to the opposing side. The head has never been found, but one persistent rumor is that the head is located at Yale University. Yale has his head? God dang, he was headbanging. Well, that does make sense. I feel like someone who went over to the opposing side, maybe he's on a drunk night one day, he's like, you dare me to go steal his head? That's like the ultimate, like, ha ha, you. Yeah, definitely is like a disrespectful thing. Jack. The river. In 1888, a man terrorized the streets of Whitechapel, London for 12 weeks. He mainly went after prostitutes and had a knack for slit throats, mutilated bodies, and on one occasion, he was said to have eaten the kidneys oh. of one of the victims. Kidneys. He was never found. I've heard so many things about this. His impact was so huge back in the day that we talk about him right now in our investigations. Imagine being in that time where you're like, okay, people are just dying off and you have no idea if you're gonna be next. So scary. There's so many people that go out and try to solve this mystery. So I'm really curious if you guys have any thoughts. Let us know if Jack the Ripper is your relative. We wouldn't ever rat you out. It's like, I got nothing to lose. Like, might as well just rat this guy out. You guys, if you like that video, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this one even more. So go check it out. We'll see you next time.